611 on CCO Radio. This is John Williams. What a lovely day we've had at the fair. Lots of friends have come up to see us and new friends as well. The line's still suspiciously down at Martha's Cookies. I think the attendance is probably a little off today. but this Surprising because the weather's amazing. This was a good day to be at the fair, especially compared to yesterday. And tomorrow mm-hmm. and Saturday are going to be, uh, tomorrow, Friday and Saturday are going to be bakers we hear. So, so lucky you if you're at the fair today and if you're in front of us here at the WCCO radio booth. I'm John Williams and with Jordana Green and I are Toby and Brenda Willis. They are performing every single day at the fair. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. The whole Willis uh, clan will be here. The Willises of the Willis Family TLC TV show fame. Welcome to the show. Thanks very much for having us. Thanks for having us. How many shows a day are you all doing? Uh, Two shows a day. Two shows a day. The two of you perform with your kids or just the kids do the performing? I play guitar with the band and Toby runs our sound. You have 12 children, right? Yes. Four to 23 years of age. That's right. I have no idea how that happened. What, what? <laughs> I think you do. Yeah, what? I think you were there. And we're you know, there's at it. A so <laughs> Aren't you, though? <laughs> well, hooray for you guys. I mean, uh, you know, that, that, th- there's two things that have happened here. One is you guys have parlayed your unique family and talent and skills into a TV show. But even if that were not the case, you were a couple who decided to have 12 kids. Who in this day and age has 12 kids? Only Why? crazy people. Only crazy people. Are you guys crazy people? Why? Why did you have 12 kids, Brenda? What's that all about? You know what? It's 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 not that so much that we're crazy. It's we're just a little bit old-fashioned. Almost everybody that I talk to that says, oh, you have 12 kids? I'm like, yeah, but how many did your grandparents have? Yeah. You know, it, it wasn't that common 50 years ago. Um, and it's a beautiful thing, you know, having a bunch of kids and investing Most your life into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. It's a lot of hard work. I, I, I will give you that. It's a lot of hard work. But it's worth it. You know, I mean, now that the kids are getting older, we're already starting to see the benefits. It's really an amazing thing. And we did decide before we got married that we're going to shoot for 12 kids. Oh, no kidding. I mean, that was my next question. We had that conversation. You had that conversation with her or she had that conversation with you? I I, I talked to her and she said, uh, you know, she agreed to have 12. And she actually said, well, you're going to have to buy a bus. And you know what? (laughs) I said, okay. And actually, we now have a bus. You you do have a bus. It's a nice bus. You guys travel the country. You've had success both on TV and certainly as a, a musical family, recording, singing, dancing. You're doing a show every day at the fair this year. You came one day last year. And they ask you to come back and be a regular. How have the crowds been? Pretty good for the Willis clan? Excellent. I, I feel like it's been almost full every single show. Wh- you know, how would really you describe nice. it? I know the answer to this question, but is it is it, um, is it a spiritual music? Is it positive music? What kind of music or dance or show do you all do? I would say it's a variety show. Um, we started off in Irish music, so we do a little bit of Irish in our show. We moved to Nashville and got involved in bluegrass. So we do a little bit of bluegrass, and then we have um, the influences of pop and rock, and you know, um, all kinds of things and ethnic instruments. Plus, so plus all the dancing, and not then only dancing. Irish, but a swing dance. Kids are nationally cha- uh, national champion swing dancers. Yep. So uh, so you, you know, see, you know, a 23-year-old young people, you know, 22, and then you see all the way down to the little four-year-old and five-year-old that get out there and wail on electric guitar and tambourine and you know it's just it's just a spectacle it really is and there's something for everybody what do you make of the comparison to the osmond family then is that apt it's a very accurate description yeah. you know and and people have said yeah the the osmonds and the partridge family and the von traps and it's a good description the partridge family had a bus do you guys have the little painted squares on the side of your bus no, but we thought about doing that. That'd be kind of cool. You'd probably get sued if you did that. I, what actually, we, I thought about painting it yellow and just like the big yellow submarine. That, yeah, wow. no kidding. Well, you could use one of those, too. What do you make to a comparison of the Duggar family, a large television family with a lot of kids? Act so, it all, or do you, you know not? What, Boy, nowadays, of, we really don't like to talk about that. <laughs> I'm you know you. what? There's a lot of ways to compare us. There really is. And and there's even families out there like us now in uh, in, in other genres of music, like in bluegrass and stuff. We're not the only ones out there. But is the downside, though, to becoming a TV family? Because TLC's picked you up for season two in the fall. You now have to live warts and all, blessings and all, in front of TV cameras. Uh, what do you make of that? You know what? When you are willing to um, open yourself up and talk about the hard things and the warts and, you know, and, the, and the difficult things and the things that you normally would be embarrassed about, people can really relate to you. 
So I know I was like, oh my gosh, I got to lose 10 pounds, and the house always has to be clean, and none of the kids can be out of line, and and and, and I she, thought that wasn't she realistic. Is that way. <laughs> and you know what? It, it wasn't realistic, and and they were like, these stories aren't meaning anything to us because we want to know who you are and. What do you struggle with? And that's how people can relate to you. And, and fortunately, the kids are good kids. I say kids, but now a bunch of them are young adults. They're, they're good. They're, they're not perfect, but they're good Do people, they all still so. live at home? They do. Yeah. And although we're hardly at home because we're on the road all the time. So right. it's more like we live in a bus. And, uh, you know, we get along most of the time. But I can imagine <laughs> a 14-year-old, a 16, 20, think of all of the issues and angst that kids go through. Um, do they mind having to display that or manage that for a national audience? Do you mind that for we, them? We chose time. we chose a different path years ago, and my kids have been reared up differently. So they, they see this coming, in other words. Is that yeah, what you're but, saying? But, you know, a lot of the issues, I mean, I would our kids are typical kids. They have a lot of the issues. Sure. But, but Boyfriend, girlfriend, mom, dad, brother, sister, all I, that. Yeah, but uh, we, we handle things so differently because, uh, you know, we, we just, everything in life we've taken the path less traveled. And so all our problems, although at the root we're the same people, everybody else, you know, just like everybody else, we handle our problems differently. So it, it's a very unique, you know, situation. Um, and, uh, you know, mostly good. <laughs> uh, Joy? Well, well, what do you mean differently? How do you handle them differently than every other parent? Well, there's a lot of communication. I mean, we homeschool our kids for one, so we know them really well. And each one has a very different personality. You would think that 14 or 12 kids raised in the same house homeschooled all together would be very similar. Well, they're not. They're all radically different, have different interests, different talents, different um, problems, you know, issues. And so Toby and I take time to know each one of them very individually. And you know what? You can't say a blanket across the, across the board, handle everything the same way because everyone's very unique and individual. And so that's one thing. And beyond schooling, we now work with our kids. So, you know, we're all in a sense in a, in a partnership. So you know, every day we wake up and it's like rather than going to work with other people, we yeah. work with each other. Well, so does the you know, 16 or 23 year old go, you know what, this is good for you all, but I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to live my what, life. Go to college and be a doctor or a lawyer, <laughs> I, you know, or gee, just go I, to the mall and hang out with my friends and not travel with the family and sing. I'm sure that comes up sometimes. Well, you know, the interesting thing is, is for example, Jessica, she's the oldest, she's 23. She's the one who writes pretty much all the songs in the band. Um, this is an opportunity for her to get her music out there. She's got brothers and sisters. I mean, normally, if you want to get your music out there, you have to pay all these band members, and there's all the issues there. Yeah, She's right. She's got free band members <laughs> that help her, yeah, that's and they true. love her music. Yeah. And so, you know, Jer's an incredibly talented, um, he's the second one, he's 22, incredibly talented musician. And so he's able to play all these instruments and come up. She couldn't pay someone. You know, to, to do that for her, you know, I mean, not with the salary that she would be making starting out. So it's really good partnership. They see the benefit of working together and staying together. We don't force them to do that. That's up to them. Um, you, you had asked earlier about, you know, like a specific example about taking the path less traveled. Jeremiah, who's now 22 and a young man, uh, he was a real good guitar player. And he played nylon and classical. I mean, great flamenco guitar, great acoustic guitar. And... He was about 17, 18, and I had to go to him. I'm like, Jer, I, I, I really think you should learn to play electric guitar. And he's like, no, nah, Dad, I, I really don't want to play electric guitar. And so here I am as a father trying to convince my older teenage son to Boy, play electric guitar. the world is guitar. upside down, isn't it? It is. It is upside down. And you know what? He's learned to play. He gets to rock out. He loves it. Um, and, you know, in some ways gets to be a rock star. You know, so it's, it's you know, and people are like, you know, what if they don't want to do this? And I'm like... What kid doesn't want to get up with electric guitar and rock out? So, you know, it, it's, again, we laugh. What are they going to go? You know, nothing wrong with being a lawyer or a doctor or an accountant. Is but he, a, is I, he a, a wrestler, too? Mm-hmm. What was that? You're, is he a wrestler, too? Uh, he he, he yeah, was? He, oh, my sons can wrestle. Yeah, I don't wrestle anymore. How they, many state titles? How many state titles do your sons have? Uh, I think somewhere around 13. 13 state titles in various weight classes, I so guess. So we're, we're ready for the battle of the bands if I'm somebody wants you. to challenge us. Even my not girls only, know wrestling. Not only can you win, but if you lose, you can beat up the judges. It's, <laughs> you can't lose. Uh, you got good wrestling here in Minnesota. so We do, mm-hmm. actually. Yep. Well, Iowa, Minnesota, uh, and, and Wisconsin are, 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 are wrestling hotbeds. Toby and Brenda Willis are here. You know them from the Willis clan. They're performing at the State Fair, and maybe you've seen their TLC show, The Willis Family. 
In fact, you'll be able to see it this fall. They've been picked up for season number two. It's 621. A lot of us know the Willis family, though, for another reason, too, and we haven't gotten to that yet. I just want to touch on it briefly. It's a tragedy that your family has survived, and I wonder how that informs your outlook on life or your music or your, your family and show. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's 621 on WCCO. Months, 626, like this is John. We're talking to Toby and Brenda Willis. You know them from the Willis family. In fact, their TV show on TLC has been picked up for a second season, and you've probably seen them at the State Fair. Maybe you haven't, but you'll sure get a chance to. They're here every day, two shows during the day at the State Fair. You'll see the stage and the grandstand, not the grandstand, the band shell at the bottom of the Space Needle here, and there's a stage there. And are they free shows, by the way? Yes, they are. Oh, awesome for us. And you're getting paid, though, right? You, the, the, we are indeed. Make sure you get paid. I'd hate to have you come all the way up from Tennessee, right? And we're selling CDs and T-shirts, too. You know, it's amazing how God must have a plan for all of us, how much life some of us can cram into the years that we are here on Earth. You would think it would be enough to say, well, we were a family with 12 kids, or we were a family that became a musical, singing, dancing, multi-talented family, and then lo and behold, we had a TV show. Or if anybody could say one of my kids was a state wrestling champ, that would be a story generations would tell, let alone to have four boys wrestling at the very top of, the, uh, of their level. Those are all just remarkable stories and remarkable things to tell. But you guys also have something that is equally tragic in your family uh, history, Toby, and I just wanted you to talk a little bit about that. Uh, I knew the Willis family before I knew you guys as entertainers because of an accident that happened to your siblings. Just tell us the, the headline on that story. Yeah, 21 years ago, my parents were traveling from Chicago up to uh, middle Wisconsin, and uh, they had six of my younger brothers and sisters in the vehicle, and a piece fell, a 30-pound piece of metal fell off a truck, punctured the gas tank, and blew up uh, my parents' vehicle. And five of my brothers and sisters died in the explosion. One made it out, my 13-year-old brother made it out, um, but burned over his whole body and died that night. And Your my parents, parents survived. My parents burned pretty bad, but they survived also. And, um, you know, in the face of that, you know, awful tragedy, you know, the thing about it is there's a lot of great people who reached out to help our family, and we're really thankful. And even to this day, you know, we, people around the whole nation reached out and helped my helped our the family whole world, in our time really. of need. Yeah. The whole and world. so we're you know, we we um we we still want to tell people, you know, thank you for all the help. And uh, the thing about it, my dad was you know, to to pay for the family and the kids and everything, he was a school te- Chicago public school teacher. Uh, but he was also a minister. Yeah. And uh, he really didn't make any money doing that, but that you know, that was his mission in life and, and uh, so it was, you know, in the in the face of this tragedy and with the news cameras going, they asked him, you know, how could something this bad happen to somebody who's supposed to be, you know, supposed doing to be God's a, work. a minister doing God's work? And, you know, my parents, you know, it's not that they, they were good people and, you know, they had to be a faith before. And they know that, hey, bad things do happen in life and, and that God says it's going to happen. We need to be strong and just trust that everything works for the good. And so there with the cameras rolling, you know, my dad basically said, you know what, God is still good. And uh, really resonated with you know a lot of people because they're like wow you know if he could stand firm in, in that bad of circumstances then uh, you know it, it kind of put their little problems of life in perspective. Did he forgive the driver of the truck? Uh, yeah, you know what, my it, it, interesting story. Uh, that because my, that man did not have a legal driver's license. Well, it, he, he technically had a legal driver's license. He, he got, got it illegally. He got it illegally. He paid for and, it. And you know, my my dad, you know, people came to him and said, you know, are you going to investigate whatever? The Wisconsin police came to our family and said, we're trying to investigate. This is our job. And they came to our family and said, we're getting stonewalled by the the Illinois police department. And uh, they said... he got his license illegally in Illinois. Anyway, they they came to us and said, there's nothing we can do. We can't investigate. You're going to have to sue. And my dad's like, no, I'm a minister. Last thing I'm going to do. And uh, because, you know, it's not just... You know, he's supposed to represent God in Your a way. Your dad had a like, case. No, I'm not going to do that. You guys had a case. And what happened is the lady who actually took the bribe for that truck driver called up my, my parents. I was actually the one who answered that telephone call. 
And she says, I can't live with myself anymore. You she worked for the Secretary of State's office, and in Illinois, there was the problem of people who couldn't get licenses because of a variety of reasons, including they didn't speak the language and couldn't read the signs. They would pay the people giving the licenses, and now you have people who aren't literate or aren't good drivers driving, in this case, a truck. And the lady that did the deal, keep going. She turned, basically, she said, I can't live with myself anymore. She goes, you know, you need to know what's going on. And... Um, she ended up, you know, becoming a whistleblower, basically. I mean, from her perspective, what she did wrong was, you know, seemed like so minor. But it's a whole chain of events. And, you know, had everybody done what's right at any of those 10 or 12 different levels, the accident would have never happened. But everybody just did something little. You know, everything from inspecting the truck to, you know, taking a bribe and so on. But it, it, what had happened was some of the workers in Illinois had actually gone to the Secretary of State's office saying, hey, there's all this illegal stuff going on. And, you know, and this, even to this day, a lot of the public doesn't know what happened. Some of these whistleblowers disappeared off the face of the earth, never to be found again. They never found the bodies. Uh, you know, I mean, this is in the police report. And, you know, they didn't, you know, the press didn't necessarily pick up on this, but they did pick up on the fact that, you know, and, and the press were, all the news in Chicago, the television, the, the newspapers, the radio, they actually became, uh, you know, when this lady came forward, we ended up going to the FBI, and the FBI said, nah, there's nothing here. And uh, end up going to the news stations, and the news stations did undercover investigation. What happened to the man eventually? Um, well, it started a whole investigation that they ended up, on the evening news with, you know, the live audio and video of the illegal stuff going on, started an investigation that eventually worked its way all the way up to the, you know, the ex-governor of state's ending, office, and ending, the up, office uh, yeah. ending up going to prison, and, and even well after our family and all our stuff, the, the two governors of Illinois going to jail. So, uh, you know, Chicago has a, and Illinois has a reputation for corruption. So and, does your, you know, wow. How did your family move forward from that then? Uh, well, life goes on. You know, you wake up the next morning, and and I had I was married. I had two kids, one on the way. The two of you were married. This was we were married at the time of the two accident. Two kids and number three's on the way. Yep. So you know what? I look at my kids, and uh, you know they 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 want to be fed. They need to be educated, and so you you just you just. Uh, uh, you know, you really what what choice do you have? But move forward. But did the two of you say, okay, our family has survived this? We're going to be a large family, not necessarily to compensate, but to sort of renew our faith in family and God or something like that. Were, the, were those connected at all? We, we made that decision long before the accident. Yeah, you said accident. you did. You before knew you we were going to have married. 12 kids. So. And, and you know what? The, the accident does give you a different perspective on life. and makes you cherish and treasure everything that you do life have. Life is short. It's very short. And you could, you know, you never know how, how soon it's going to end for you. I mean, for Pete, it ended at six weeks. You know, for Ben, it was 13 years and the others in between. But it just gives you a perspective on life that you really, truly do appreciate, you know, what you do have and the time that you've got together. But isn't it ironic, then, that here's the Willis family, which for those of us that were in Chicago media at the time, saw your family as synonymous with, with just heartache, with tragedy. And yet here you are, positive and upbeat and making people feel good. I mean, boy, if you guys can do that... I think it's what a do I have to complain about? It's, good it's a grief. beautiful closure on the story, I think. Yeah, because really? you know what? There is there is a lot of people. There are a lot of people out there who go through a ton of heartache. We are not the only people who go I, through I that. I think just about everybody, sooner everybody or later, does. will go through hard times in Something their life. Something really hard. Boy, and but if you're we carrying can be, the torch, I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, and if we can be an inspiration and a positive influence on them and something to just help keep them going, then it really feels good to us. You know, it really, really... Um, is a, it's a great mission to have, it and is, it keeps you going. It is great to, in a sense, be that positive side of the story, and and, and, and you know to what? get to other live thing, that out now. Other things have happened to us. I mean, our house burned down. Twelve years ago, our uh, ten years ago, whatever it was, our house burned completely to the ground. Do you ever look up at the sky and go, Lord, it's, it's the Willises. You can yeah. stop now, okay? We've you had You know what enough. we always say? It's going to make the book better. <laughs> well, you, you just have to live your life that way. You just, I you guess just do. it is. Uh, I'm out of time, you guys, but you've just been a delight, and you know we're really anxious for the second season of the show um, and uh, the music that you're going to be performing here. The kids are in the bus right now, eating uh, eating the bus is what I, I believe one of you Most said. Most likely. And and getting along fine. Thanks for coming by and visiting with Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, what a Thanks pleasure. How about that, Toby and Brenda Willis? It's 6:30.